This tutorial is all about ozone, a gas which forms in the upper atmosphere, and how CFCs have affected this ozone layer. We'll look at the historical side of CFCs and how they came to be banned, and also at the chemistry behind how these CFCs damage the ozone layer. First of all, what are CFCs anyway? Well, CFCs are organic compounds which have halogens attached instead of some of the hydrogens. So they actually stand for chlorofluorocarbons. They're organic molecules which have got carbon, chlorine and fluorine atoms and sometimes also hydrogen atoms as well. They were first invented in 1928 as a replacement for ammonia which was used as a refrigerant. It was a much safer uh, substance to use. Uh, it had a low boiling point, it was non-toxic, it was unreactive and the one that Midgley discovered was this one at the bottom which had two chlorines and two fluorines attached. During the 1960s through to the 1990s the use of CFCs increased enormously across the world, not only in refrigerators, but also mainly as propellants in aerosol cans, but also for cleaning circuit boards of grease and as a blowing agent to make the bubbles in uh, polystyrene for uh, a packing agent. Initially, everybody thought that CFCs were wonderful because of their very good properties. But in 1974, two scientists discovered a link between the increase in CFCs and holes or a depletion of the ozone layer in the upper atmosphere. As other scientists tested these theories and found them to be the case, there was an agreement amongst the scientific community that these CFCs had to be banned. Politicians got involved and in 1997 the EU agreed to ban the use. The UN got itself involved 10 years later and all developing countries and developed countries should have stopped using CFCs by 2030. We'll now look at the chemistry of CFCs and why they do such damage to the ozone layer. It's all to do with ultraviolet light and to do with what's called a chain reaction. There's two ways a covalent bond can break. One way is where both of the electrons in the bond go over to one of the atoms and this makes ions. Here a chlorine plus and a chlorine minus ion. The second way which is the way that we're going to look at, is where one of the electrons goes to each of the atoms making up the bond. This is called homolytic breaking, and this forms what are called free radicals, which have an unpaired electron and make them very, very reactive. The energy for this change can come from the energy of ultraviolet light. So, this CFC here goes up into the upper atmosphere. Ultraviolet light provides the energy to break off one of these chlorine atoms as a chlorine radical. As you can see here, the carbon is surrounded by two chlorines and two fluorines. One of these carbon-chlorine bonds breaks, an electron goes to each of the atoms, and we end up with one, two radicals. It's this chlorine radical here, which is very reactive and causes the damage. Ozone is a special form of oxygen which has got three oxygen atoms in it. Its formula is O3. When a chlorine radical comes across an ozone molecule in the upper atmosphere, there's a reaction and the chlorine radical forms a bond with one of the oxygen atoms to form a ClO radical and an oxygen molecule. This ClO radical is also very reactive and if it meets up with an oxygen radical, it will form a chlorine radical and oxygen gas. So essentially the chlorine radical destroys an ozone molecule and an oxygen atom to form two molecules of oxygen 
but is itself regenerated, so it can then go and do further damage. So, an ozone molecule and a free oxygen atom are broken up to become two oxygen molecules, but another chlorine radical is made which can attack again and again and again. So, one molecule of CFC breaking down to form one chlorine radical can then attack again and again and again on many, many, many ozone molecules breaking down to oxygen molecules. This depletes the ozone layer. And herein lies the problem, because only a very small number of chlorine atoms from only a small number of these CFC molecules breaking down can destroy a very large number of ozone molecules. And it's not helped by the fact that these CFC molecules themselves are very, very stable and don't break down like many other molecules do in the upper atmosphere. So why are we so bothered about this ozone layer and what does it do for us? Well, it protects us from excess ultraviolet light and it stops a lot of ultraviolet light hitting the Earth's surface. It does this because ozone is naturally made up in the upper atmosphere from oxygen molecules. Splitting up into oxygen atoms, these oxygen atoms react with oxygen molecules to form ozone molecules. Ozone is also destroyed by the reaction with oxygen atoms to make oxygen molecules. So there's this cycle of oxygen becoming ozone and ozone becoming oxygen. The energy for both these reactions comes from ultraviolet light. So the ultraviolet light is absorbed by these molecules and therefore doesn't hit the Earth's surface. If there's less ozone in the upper atmosphere, there's less for the ultraviolet light to react with and there's more ultraviolet light gets down to the Earth's surface and ultraviolet light can cause skin cancers and worse. You'd think then, with CFCs being banned, the problem would have disappeared. But the problem is that because these CFCs are very stable and can last for many decades in the upper atmosphere, the problem is going to get worse before it gets better. And as you can see from these pictures on the right hand side, even though CFCs were banned in the 1980s 90s, the problem is still getting worse into the late 1990s. And they reckon that recovery won't be detectable until about another 10 or so years. CFCs were, as we said, very, very useful chemicals. So what can be used instead? Well, scientists have developed what are called HFCs, or hydrofluorocarbons. These are organic molecules which have got carbon atoms hydrogens and fluorines but no chlorines. These are much safer and don't break down in the upper atmosphere and although this is off the syllabus the reason why they don't break down is that these carbon fluorine bonds are much stronger than the carbon chlorine bonds and there isn't enough energy in ultraviolet light to break them down. Another molecule which is used instead of CFCs in repellents is butane. And here's a past paper question. This question is about the ozone layer. The ozone layer is damaged by free radicals. Chlorofluorocarbon CFCs are one source of free radicals. Most CFCs are now banned in the UK. Look at the diagram. It shows a dot and cross diagram for a hydrogen molecule. The two hydrogen atoms are joined by a covalent bond. This covalent bond is a shared pair of electrons. The covalent bond can be broken to make two free radicals. Explain what happens to the electrons when free radicals are made. Well, one electron goes to each of the atoms. Small numbers of free radicals can do a lot of damage to the ozone layer. Explain why. This is a chain reaction. In each reaction, 
the radical is regenerated at the end. Chlorofluorocarbons will continue to damage the ozone layer for a long time after they've been banned. Explain why. Uh, this is because they are very stable. And suggest a replacement for chlorofluorocarbons. These would be HFCs, which are called hydro fluorocarbons. And here are the answers. Uh, the breaking of the bond, this uh, homolytic fission being one electron going to each atom. The idea of the chlorine radicals doing a lot of damage because they set up a chain reaction. The idea of CFCs causing lasting damage because they remain in the atmosphere for a long time uh, or they're unreactive and the replacements being HFCs or any other known replacements such as the alkanes, uh, you might have said butane.